Hey, everybody, this is Alan Fine, and I'm here with David Herrera, the president of Norwegian Cruise Line. We are going to talk about the brand new ship, Norwegian Viva, which I just had the privilege to be on. We're going to show it to you. We've got a whole week of interviews about this great ship, and this is all here on Insider Travel Report. How are you? Thanks, David, thanks, uh, thanks for talking. So, thanks for having me here, and I'm excited uh, to talk about Viva, and I really appreciate you giving us the opportunity to not only talk to me, but some other folks from the organization. We're excited. Yes, but we're starting off with you. We, okay, we, want, great. we want your point of view on this whole thing. First of all, what does Viva mean to Norwegian Cruise Line at this time? Viva, as, as you know, because you were just on her, she's a sister ship. She's an identical twin to Prima. And what Viva is, it is the next evolution for us. We elevated the brand with Prima and we learned, because um, you learn every day, the goal should be every new ship, your goal should be to make it better than the last one. And even though she's a twin, even though she's identical, there are enough tweaks uh, on her because you learn so much when you're sailing. It really is, you know, your first of any class for every cruise line. You have this plan, you envision this flow, this guest flow, and you realize you got to tweak a couple things along the way, and you don't always get it right the first time. That's why if, if you sail on, you know, on, on, a, on a new class of ship in month one and come back in month four, it's going to be a different experience. Ideally, it's going to be a better experience. And that's what Viva, for us, the fact that we just took delivery of her a couple of weeks ago, she's going to spend some time in Europe. We're going to have a nice event here in Miami at the end of November, and then she's going to launch a full season in Puerto Rico. We are just thrilled for what this means for us as a as a brand and and, and what it means for the next step in our organization. Absolutely. So we, we're going to show them all the video, and we're definitely talking about the little incremental changes that you've made already. Now, yeah. um, what's Norwegian Cruise Line's connection to Miami that helped you pick the God person of this ship? It's our home. It's our home. We are uh, we are a Miami-based organization. I am so proud of the team that we have at NCL, and so many of us are locals. I was born and raised in Miami. So many of us uh, love the city, love that she is the cruise capital of the world. So when it came time for us to select a godparent, you always factor in a, a few different things. You factor in, you know, is there any real connection and affinity to the brand? Um, is there any connection to where she's sailing out of? What you mean as a, uh, uh, as, as, is it genuine? And for us, and Luis Fonsi is, is phenomenal. He's, he's really a great person. He's a sincerely good human being. I am proud that he has, uh, has decided to work with us and we've decided to work with him. His sister used to work here about 10 years ago. Okay. Really? So uh, the fact that he is obviously an incredibly talented interview individual, the fact that, you know, he he happens to be from Puerto Rico and he's very proud of that, as he should be. The fact that he lives in Miami, his sister used to work here. I have people who work with me who remember working with his sister. It's just a very genuine connection. So when we uh, when we got together, it was just a natural fit. And I'm, I couldn't tell you how, how happy I am that he's going to represent. Uh, Norwegian Cruise Line, as is Paulina Rubio, as is Marcelo Hernandez, Pedro Capo. We're going to have an amazing event headlined by uh, by Luis Fonsi, but it's going to be a blowout for sure. That's great. We're looking forward to that. Uh, and I love the uh, the whole sister thing. I had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> so now you're you're in charge, and so we're mm. talking to the man. So I want to know. What's your overall strategic vision for Norwegian Cruise Line now? And do you have any course corrections you're planning? You know, Al, thank you for the question. Thank you for the compliment. But remember, we're a team here at Norwegian. You know, I am I am honored and I am proud to, to lead the best team in the industry. And you can put that twice in your in your article because that's who we are. That's who my team is. And uh, when we talk about what we're doing, what we're uh, what we're improving on. I had a great base level to start from, you know, uh, Harry Summer, who was the brand president up until six months ago, and now he's the CEO. 
Harry doesn't become the CEO unless he succeeds as a brand president. So uh, I've had the good fortune of working with Harry for almost a dozen years. And for the last five years, I've been, uh, you know, I've been the CMO. I ran, uh, I ran sales. Uh, I ran uh, finance. So uh, Harry has always been a collaborative professional by nature. That's just who he is. So our working team, our group, my, my group of uh, senior leaders, we've been together for a bit. And I've had the privilege of actually having been in the room as we decide what our company is going to be, what our strategy is going to be for the last several years. So I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't picture making any major shifts. There's no shifts. Uh, I like to, to tell folks, you know what, if you're, if you're good, if, you're, if you have conviction around your strategy, you should always be looking to fine tune, but you should be looking to pivot, not to shift. If you're shifting in the middle of a strategy, unless market conditions changed, unless there was something significant that happened, you know, that, that might mean that you don't have the conviction that you probably should have had when you established your strategy. And uh, I, I'm proud of, of the way that we go about our decision making as an organization. I'm proud of the contribution that that Harry asked me and, and my fellow leaders to make. So when I when I tell you that for us, it all starts with the people. It's not just because we like each other. It's because we trust each other. We respect each other. We, we've been together for a long time and we've been successful together. And, you know, I, I'll say the C word um, a few minutes in. I would tell you COVID was a, a challenging time for the entire industry. But one thing, one one of the few benefits of having gone through COVID is we did it together. We got stronger as a team. We worked together more than ever. And we have that passion, that uh, that confidence and that trust in one another that makes all management teams uh, unique and makes them just stronger. And that's what I that's what I'm most excited about as an organization. So basically, don't fix it if it ain't broke, but tweak it, which you guys do very well. Uh, you know what? Just as we were talking about the, the tweaking of Prima and Viva, look, there, there's always something to to react to. And as a public company, excuse me, our goal is, is to enhance shareholder value. But it really, you got you to gotta start with the guest experience. Yeah. Your guests got to like your product. If your guests don't like your product, they're not going to come back. They're not going to tell their friends about it. So as a cruise line that's that's guest first centric, we are passionate about making sure that we deliver the best guest experience that we can. Your your answer is part of the answer to the next question, because I'm going to ask you, what factors do you think contributed to the record sales in November and January and a strong second quarter? Uh, there's a number of factors. One is you've just discussed. Let's go over them. So you know you know what's 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 amazing, and it, it's it was one year ago this month that the COVID protocols were lifted. Okay, so prior to August 2022, we hadn't sailed. We started sailing in summer July 2021. From July 2021 to August 2022, we were sailing. The ships were you know not full, but we we had a lot of uh, of past guests. And folks who are curious, who joined our ships, and we appreciate and are very thankful that they trusted us to not only provide a uh, a fantastic guest guest experience, but also provide a safe venue. But I got to tell you, in beginning in August, when the protocols changed and we were back to somewhat steady state, that 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 concept of revenge travel, that that pent up demand, it just came running, and uh, I'm very proud of our team not only not only did we do all the right things along the way taking care of our guests and uh making sure that we were we were taking care of our ships but we were ready we were ready from a promotion perspective from a product perspective we were ready from a pricing perspective we hit the ground running beginning in august there was there was an initial influx but you know black friday cyber monday it's a, it's a critical time in the cruise industry and Norwegian had the best Black Friday, Cyber Monday that we've ever had. And we carried that momentum forward into wave and we had a record setting wave. So it's uh, it really is a uh, a function of, you know, the opportunity that the end of COVID presented. But also it's just the 
the the skill that we have within the team. But also, I think by enhancing guest experience, you're able to keep pricing high which helps everyone, especially the travel advisor and their commission. So it was a win-win. It, it, it is. And, and, you know, when, when we, we, we can't, we can't succeed without our, our, our travel advisors, without our travel partners. And uh, we, we want to make sure that we're very clear about our commitment to our travel partners. So removing NCFs, um, including air, uh, maintaining, maintaining high pro- prices because we deserve those high prices. Because we right. deliver a fantastic product on our ship, all of that is in the uh, is to the benefit of our travel partners, and in, in, in that they that equates into a obviously higher commission payout on an individual uh, booking basis. But we never lose sight of the fact that when a guest, when a, when a travel partner um, chooses NCL, they are they are entrusting us with their guest. And uh, the best way to maintain that and honor that trust is doing every, everything we can, not only for the guest, but also for the travel partner. And I'm very proud of the way that, you know, we've hired John Cherneski now. John's been with us for about five months. He's the head of sales. Uh, it and feels we'll be like talking he's been to him tomorrow. I got to tell you, it feels like he's uh, he's been with us forever. It is a natural fit. Uh, one of the things I love about John is he does not. He takes his job very seriously. He does not take himself too seriously. And that's who we are as an organization. I was, John was the last meeting I had before this call. So uh, I, I think hiring John, NCFs, uh, all the co-op and all the different support that we provide for our travel partners, I think that's a clear signal that we are committed uh, to, to the channel and we simply can't win without them. We've been talking to your team about how the guest experience is evolving. Yep. What is that guest experience at NCL? So let's let's talk about Viva. She's she's new. She's she's the latest uh, in the fleet. Um, when we launched Prima, we we came out with Indulge Food Hall, a unique concept, first proper food uh, gallery uh, on a cruise ship, and we realized, okay, this is awesome. Guests love it. Twelve different venues. You can just order on an iPad. Super convenient. Super cool looking out uh, aft uh, of the ship. It's awesome. But you know what? The seating wasn't ideal. So we, we made some tweaks. And you probably noticed it, Alan, when you when you were on Viva. Um, we made it easier, more convenient for you to sit and enjoy the meal. That That didn't just happen because somebody in corporate said, hey, let's make it bigger. We listened to our guests. You also improved the ordering. Yeah. The ordering is so fast now. Yeah. You you almost get it before you know you, it was it was like genies had jumped out. But but Alan, part of that is you know Harry and I are both uh, you know Harry's a CPA. I was a former investment banker. We're very analytical folks, and within the organization, I, I think one of the things that's changed over the last few years is that we rely more on on analytics to to evaluate the decisions that we make. Hey. You, you got to have a good gut to run a, a cruise industry. You got you to gotta know your consumer, but you got to listen to them. And the best way to listen to them is to understand the feedback that you get. And we are fortunate to have a phenomenal system of understanding, asking questions, getting the answers, laying out the results, and then making, you know, making, making operational decisions around that. And that was one of them. That was straight from the guest. It wasn't some guy in corporate that said, we need more seats. We thought we needed more seats, and it was confirmed with the guest. But from all the guests who who love your partnership with Starbucks, it wasn't really necessary to have another branch there. The one in the main atrium is wonderful. And you were able, I think, to get 90 more seats just from that. Yeah, I I, I think the, uh, you know, like anything else, using that specific example, the fact that we removed that, that, that smaller Starbucks in Indulge, that was a cost benefit analysis. That was pros and cons. Like, okay, so from a guest perspective, who benefits more? Having that venue there where you can get a cup of another another venue to get a cup of coffee, or you have now more space, it's ample. And 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 back to the 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 point about you know the fact that you get your food faster, this enables us to have more of a flow. The analytics comes in is that we're somewhat predictive of what people are gonna order. The fact that we've had a year's worth of prima. And people are are really into the, you know, the barbecue is amazing. The Thai food is amazing. We have a sense for what people are going to want. And 
and knowing the flow and knowing the uh, your 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 peaks and valleys that just makes it a more efficient process for our guests and for our amazing crew they they know where to go they know what to do it's it's the evolution and that that's that's what that's the benefit of the second class second ship in a class so you guys you you do the analytics and you listen to the guests and you improve and so viva improves over prima but now how many how many more prima class ships are there going to be so there's a total of six prima came out in 22 viva in 23 we are not taking on tonnage in 24 and there will be four more ships each coming out in each year 25 20, 26 27 28 25 26 27 28 so we're 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 thrilled for us the prima is 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 a, an evolution of our brand we talked about this before Everything that we're learning in one and two, the fact that we have that gap year in in, in 2024, uh, we're going to be able to uh, enhance the experience for Prima three and Prima four. But, and but five, also, six, you're five. not you're not no slouch about the old ships. I mean, you did some improvements on Joy. What else are you doing? So let's talk about Joy for a minute because I, I don't know. You know, I'm sure you know this. Joy, she she's got a special place in my heart. I was the president of our China business. And Joy was our China ship. Yes, it was. Uh, I, I had the good fortune to work with Frank Del Rio, Harry, Robin Lindsay, and our entire team in um, making that ship customized to uh, that, to the China market. Yeah, that region. Yeah. So um, obviously, you know, we we were very successful in China. I'm very proud of what we accomplished. But the simple fact is, financially, we realized after a few months that we would be better off taking that sh- taking uh, joy to uh, to uh, to Alaska. Alaska, right? That's where I and, saw. It. And we did, and you know, we we did a renovation, and it worked out well, and it was great. But that was 2018, so it's been five years. And uh, at NCL, we are we are passionate about making our ships uh, as as well maintained. As as great and and impressive an experience for our guests as possible, which is why we are now doing a a major a major dry dock. There's a few specific things that are going to be changing. Um, we're going to go ahead and offer more guest accommodations. So we're actually adding it. it the observation deck, Alan. I don't know if you remember, the observation deck was 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 huge. Um, the the Chinese market. Um, having indoor observation space because we're traveling, uh, we're, we were cruising year round in Asia meant that we're going to be sailing through some inclement weather weather. So we went ahead and, and built an oversized observation deck. We're going ahead and convert some, uh, some of that space into a, uh, into, into new balcony, uh, staterooms. Uh, we're also recategorizing some of our staterooms because we're adding a proper thermal suite. When we took uh, Joy to, to to China, she didn't need the, uh, she, the, the the guests there weren't as interested in the proper thermal suites that we have in some of our other Breakaway Plus uh, class ships. Um, our guests in North America and our, our 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 international guests they they asked for it, so we're going to go ahead. We're going to invest some money, and she's going to receive a full blown thermal suite. We're keeping the racetrack. We're keeping the wonderful atrium. We're keeping the 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 core feel of Norwegian Joy. We're just fine tuning. We're pivoting along the margins. Do I and remember correctly that it, it had a huge casino that the, then we're able to change it to staterooms? We did. Um, we uh, we also we, it was more uh, le- less less conversion to staterooms, more to other uh, common areas. Um, one of the things that uh, that we we found on again in the Chinese market, we had we had three different levels of casinos. Don't need that in the North American market. That we did back in 2018. I'll tell you one specific change that we're doing that we're, you know, we're we think is just going to enhance the guest experience because of the way the venue was. One of the smaller casinos, one of the VVIP casinos, was next to two of the owner suites. Well, we repurposed that originally as a library, but now we're going to go ahead and uh, repurpose the library and extend each of the uh, of the uh, owner suites to create an even bigger, more luxurious now three bedroom owner suite. Okay. Uh, there's demand for it. We, yes. we get questions all the time. Yes. It is going to be, you know, top, top of the line in the Haven. 
owner suite, three bedroom in the Haven. Wow. Uh, I'm sure uh, I'm sure it's going to fill up quickly. One of the things that uh, travel advisors should know if they don't already is how much uh, NCL gives back. And I'm thinking of two categories. I'm thinking of teachers and the military, as, as in fact, you were ex-military. Let's talk about uh, Norwegian Cruise Line and the, and the giving back. You know, it's a uh, it, this one's near and dear to my heart as well. So, yes, I was uh, prior service. And there's a few of us here at NCL that were prior service. And a couple of years ago, we realized, you know, we don't offer a proper military program. You know, we like like many others, we, we offered something, but we didn't offer enough. So we we launched the military appreciation program um, designed for veterans by veterans. And not only do we include a, a, a discount, right? There's every little bit helps. But once you're verified through IDME, you uh, you're entitled to a, a combinable discount. But the real uh, experience is once you get on the ship, there's a nice welcome packet waiting for you. Um, it includes a challenge coin. It includes an operations order for those of us. Uh, in the military, a five paragraph op order. I think a lot of us know what that means. Um, there's there's patches, individual ship patches, and it comes with the with the pin. And if if you wear the pin when you if you want to wear the pin, our crew knows what it means, and you're going to get a thank you for your service, not just because that's what you're supposed to say, but because we mean it, right? Because that that that's the the goal of the program. We when we sat as a team to think about who are we honoring, who are we showing respect for wasn't some arbitrary person. It was people that we served with. I envisioned my team. Uh, uh, people envision the men and women, our brothers and sisters in arms. So that's why it's so special for us. And there's one other part that I, I, I think is probably the coolest part of the program. I was just on uh, escape with my family. I just cruised for a week in the Caribbean. Um, on the first sea day, we have a, a military appreciation program event. It's just a, a welcome aboard event where we sing the national anthem. Um, we have some of our, we have one of our entertainers come in and, and sing the national anthem. We provide drinks and, you know, coffee, uh, cupcakes, whatever, whatever, whatever it is. But what you get is everyone who's prior service, who's participating in the program, you sit in a room and you get to relive it. It just reinforces, you know, that once you join the military, you know, you join a family, you have a shared experience. And, and, and having that while you're on, on vacation, that's I think that's one of those relationship enhancers because, Alan, I know you cruise a lot. When you go on a cruise, you know you see the same 25, 30 people wherever you go because you usually end up having a lot of the same interest. Well, now, after having been together on a sea day, on, on the first sea day, having been part of the military uh, appreciation program, the connections and the bonds that you have, it's it's kind of like you're traveling with a, with a built-in family or a built-in group. I, I'm I'm so proud of it. It's just just one of the many ways that Norwegian Cruise Line gives back to us. But it also extends beyond those participating and inspires everyone else. It, it does. It really does. And, and it reinforces who we are as an organization, what we stand for, what are the pillars of, of when, when you have a chance to, to show, not say, uh, what you stand for. I think this does it. We put our money where our mouth is. It's, this is... Uh, this is a program that, that we're proud to, to move forward with. And uh, I, I got to tell you, I, it's, it's, been, it's been great for us. It's been great for us because not only for the, for the crew and for the guests, but even for our, for our team members here at Shoreside, it just, it just feels good knowing, knowing that you're giving back. Now, there's another team that's seen horrible, bloody action. And yeah. those are the teachers. <laughs> yeah, you know. It's and they my, deserve I, recognition for that, too. So, so our Giving Joy program is fantastic. We, we, we give away cruises. We allow, uh, we accept nominations. And from those nominations, we're allowed to vote. Uh, our, our, uh, the, we, we get a public vote and we select um, teachers and we give away cruises. And starting next year, we've got a little secret we haven't figured out yet. We haven't finalized it yet, but we're, 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 we're going to be expanding the Giving Joy program for teachers. This one hits home as well. My wife. Uh, was a second grade teacher, so uh, I know what what she goes through. I know what her her fellow teachers go through. It is a uh, it is a tough job. It's an important job, and you got to be a special kind of person uh, to do it day in day out. It's yeah. uh, and very patient person to do it day in day out. Right, that's great. 
So listen, we go out to now more than 122,000 travel advisors every day. No holidays, by the way. Yeah. And so what is your message to them? You know, we touched on it a little bit earlier, and thank you for the question, Alan. Um, we cannot succeed as an industry, specifically NCL. We cannot succeed without travel partners. And we don't use that term loosely. I view a partnership as, as a win-win, working together to grow our businesses and provide our guests with the best experience possible. I want to thank our travel advisors, our travel partners for entrusting us with your guests. And I look forward in this new role to meeting more of you, spending time with you, and better understanding how I can help you be successful. So now, where should they go to learn more? You know, there are a couple places they can go. Uh, obviously, NorwegianCentral.com has a lot of information, has a lot of support materials, has anything and everything you need uh, to continue to expand your business with Norwegian Cruise Line. And then, of course, there's John Cherneski's uh, takeovers of our Facebook page. Uh, it is amazing to me how he figured out that he can just go in and do stuff. It's always entertaining. It's always a great read. It's always fun. Please. Uh, join our Facebook uh, page. If you haven't, please follow us. I think it's uh, uh, one of the, the the things that we aspire to do is not only help you grow your business, but we talked about this earlier today. We want to be the brand that is the easiest to work with, the easiest to partner with, the one that is truly committed in growing your business. David, thank you for talking to us. Alan, thank you for your time, sir. I appreciate it. No problem. And this is Alan Fine for Insider Travel Report.